Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine on the Diamond. Today I'm reviewing the 2020 Decoy Rosé Wine. It's from California. I uh, don't see any specific appellation on here. Um, but Duckhorn is a major producer from the area, so I wouldn't be surprised if they were getting grapes from everywhere and just choosing what to put into their rosé at any given time. Uh, however, whoa, if I can actually open it. Oh, is the whole capsule going to come off? Don't do this. Don't do this. This is weird when it happens. However, I can't open the bottle. <laughs> okay, there we go. Screw top plus one. So every once in a while, there is an issue with screw tops. <laughs> you find them in those types of cases. But that being said, with that being so loose, and this having such a hard time opening, I really hope this had stayed secure pretty well. Sometimes that could be a defect in screw top bottling processes. Yeah, see, like, there's something going on here because I may have to get another bottle if this goes bad because I can't even reclose this thing. That's not a good start, decoy. Yeah, I wouldn't trust this thing being laid on its side at all after after you unscrew it. So be careful of that if you're getting the screw top. Make sure you don't have the same type of faulty one that I have from decoy. Uh, anyway, so let's take a look at it. From a color standpoint, pale salmon, no artifacts, no cloudiness. So anyway, on the nose, well, luckily you don't smell like you've gone bad. Uh, I can't tell if there any sort of false, no oxidation, no reduction. Uh, there is... Strawberry, peach, raspberry, there's a little bit of lime. Also, the alcohol is surprisingly intense on the nose. The nose itself is a medium intensity. The alcohol is kind of burning my nasal cavity. Along with the alcohol, I think the other thing that's maybe making the alcohol a little bit more intense is I'm kind of getting a, like a dash of white pepper on the nose as well. Yeah, anyway, how does it taste? So let's see, it's about a medium intensity on the palate. Everything really all the fruit elements are really well integrated into each other. Um, that white pepper note shows up on the mid palate, goes away as you're going into the finish, and then as the finish is like really underway, it's it, the white pepper note is gone. I'm not quite sure what to expect with this because I mean, I'm not really getting any secondary characteristics to it, and it's just a fruit forward rose, but it's not a very intense fruit forward rose, it's just kind of laid back. All the fruit elements that you get on the nose are on the palate. They're all at the same intensity level, which is nice. Nothing's out of balance. It's just, I, I was hoping for more intensity on the palate. Even the acid's like a medium acid. Everything's just very medium about this wine. Maybe that was the intent. I don't know. Anyway, let's go ahead and get to the Blick. From a balance standpoint, I think you're in balance because the alcohol is well integrated on the palate, though it burns a little bit on the nose. Um, there's no noticeable tannins. Everything is kind of medium across the board. So yeah, full point. In terms of length, I'm getting a medium minus finish, no points. In terms of intensity, medium on the nose, medium on the palate, half a point. And in terms of complexity, I'm getting a reasonable amount of primary, no secondary, and I expect no tertiary in the 2020. So half a point. In the end, you're a good wine. I'm wondering though, if this screw top really didn't mess with it because it has lost that intensity. I'm wondering if this bottle is a similar situation to the Mateus bottle that I tried the other day. Um, different situation though, this is a screw top, they had cork, but if something had gone wrong with the cork during that process, oxidation can reduce intensity. Even if I screw this on, I can lift it pretty much straight off. Oh, now it seals? Now it seals. Oh, no, it didn't seal. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's just a thing where I, I'm wondering if this lost some of the intensity because of oxidation too. Uh, the only way for me to know is to convince my wife to let me buy a bottle of each that is actually sealed well and uh, to see how it goes. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you had the 2020 Decoy Rosé? Did you have the same experience I had with the screw top and or the intensity of the wine? If you did or didn't, leave a comment below and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime. In the meantime, I'm actually going to send this video to Decoy uh, and let them know that this went on um, because they might want to fix this. This this not being able to unscrew and then also not being able to reseal. This is not what these things are for. So uh, that, that kind of needs to be addressed. 